Okay, good afternoon. Thank you all who have joined us today. Uh, we are uh, still waiting for a few more people to sign on, but we're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Hope Pfeiffer. I am the communications manager for the Stephen A. Cohen uh, Military Family Clinic at Valley Cities. Thank you for joining us today. We're really excited about today's workshop. We focus this on this workshop on employment opportunities and financial assistance. And this is two topics that were very important in our community. Um, we received calls about resources for these two topics. So we wanted to bring this to the forefront and provide some help um, for veterans and military families in these two areas. We're really excited to have um, two hosts from the Cohen Clinic here with us today. Um, but before we go into that, I just wanted to explain a few logistics. Um, everyone is muted, um, so uh, we ask that you stay muted. And any questions that you have throughout the presentation, you can use the Q&A function. Um, and just so that you know, this presentation will be recorded so that we can share this wonderful information for those who weren't able to join us today. So let's go into our hosts for today. Uh, first, we have Ron Coleman, who is the outreach manager for the Cohen Clinic at Valley Cities. Ron is a Navy veteran, and he brings more than 15 years of outreach experience to our clinic. Um, his role is to establish mutual mutually beneficial partnerships and to solicit, solicit refer, referrals in order to assist our post 9-11 veterans, military families, and caregivers with outpatient mental health services. Also, we have Miriam, she's our case manager, um, and she um, is going to explain to you a little later on why she works to connect clients with resources and referrals like two that we have today. Um, she has a passion to see people excel in life, and I think that's a passion that we all share at the Cohen Clinic. We want to connect people with the necessary resources. Sometimes that goes outside of the mental health resources, right? So today we're going to talk about two of those um, areas of focus. And now I'm gonna let Ron go ahead and take it from here and talk a little bit about the services that we provide at the Cohen Clinic. Oops, uh, there you go. Hey, thank you for the introduction, I really appreciate it. As she said, my name is Ron Coleman and I am uh, the outreach manager for the Cohen Clinic. I've been in the business now for about a year. I'm very excited about that and very excited about what we have to offer and what we do and how we can make a difference in a lot of people, lot, people's lives. Uh, most of you have uh, a brief and knowledge and history of what we do, but I just kind of wanted to touch on it so that you understand thoroughly what services we are providing and how we're making a difference during this pandemic. Um, as we, as you can see in front of you, obviously we started the network back in 2016. Our very gracious, um, the person who started it all, Stephen A. Cohen, who has been nothing but a major support for us, created this to help serve post 9-11 veterans, their family members, and even people who are caregivers um, to receive the quality, high quality mental health care that they deserve. And not only do we just treat post 9-11 veterans, but we also treat uh, reservists as well who uh, may need the service, their families, active duty service members, their spouses, their partners, anybody who's associated, their family members, moms, dads, parents, caregivers, or whatever. We're there to help them to fulfill and, and exercise as much uh, care and health care as we could possibly give them in the mental health uh, regime. Um, we're here to support the mission and that's what we do. And we, what we aim to shoot for is high quality access care and accessible care. So making it so that when somebody comes to us and says, hey, uh, we really need some help, we try to get them the help as quickly as possible. Uh, the Stephen A. Cohen Military Clinic at Valley Cities of all places in Lakewood, uh, our mission is to improve the quality of life for these post 9-11 veterans, as it says in front of you, and their fam families, and make it accessible. I think that's the big key to what we're talking about. I, I know we're huge partners with the VA. We do a lot of work with them. And one of the things that we'd like to strive for is to make our care as accessible as possible. And what we try to shoot for is to, well, from the time somebody contacts us, is to, con is to get them in the system and start their treatment within a two-week time period. Um, and that's kind of a big deal for us because it gives us a, a, an extra caveat, if you will, to help people who may be, up, may be needing some care uh, right away that maybe are having difficulty finding that care. So it's but the care that we have, we're, all of our clinicians are trained to do, as you see, holistic based care. And um, it's a planned treatment that people go through and understand that uh, what we're trying to do is make people better. And then, as you can see here, who do we actually serve? Uh, I kind of mentioned that already. We do the National Guard as well. 
And we really don't care. As long as you put the uniform on, you spent one day on active duty, um, we will not turn you away because of any kind of discharge. We don't, we don't judge on that. We wanna make sure we give you the help that you need. We also include family members, people who are designated as caretakers. We also help you as well. And family members therein of the active duty, duty service member as well. So there's a bunch of people that we are trying to get a hold of and help moving forward. This is some of the things in front of you that we use uh, as far as what kind of care that we use and how we are helping people. Uh, we have people that will do assessments and screenings to see where you are, what kind of help we can provide for you. And if that turns out to be something that we can't provide for you, we have our case manager who you'll speak to uh, right after me who can assess and find out how we can get you help within the community. Uh, we use evidence-based therapies. Those things are each clinician is very thorough and, and very highly skilled and trained to help you if you are in need of these mental health services uh, based on evidence-based therapies. We're not just throwing things out in the air and hoping it sticks. We actually have a process and hope things that help have things to help you moving forward. Our referral of networks, it, uh, basically what I do, my job is to connect um, referral resources to the clinic and also develop partnerships with, the, with uh, people who can send us referrals, number one, but also to, to be able to, our clinic also reaches out and helps people along the way um, with these partnerships to do whatever it is that we need to do, whether it be uh, getting out in the community and helping people who are in need or providing um, emergency services or just partnering up with, you know, the different partners that we have to help complete their missions as well so that we can give it the whole, the whole care aspect of helping each veteran as, as thoroughly as we possibly can. Um, we also make it a point to provide a lot of training to people. So, um, you know, if there's things that are lacking in um, what it is you're, what you're dealing with and you need some help with some things, we put on training on a regular basis to help with that. If you need care for certain things and you're dealing with mental health issues, these are some of the issues that we deal with at the clinic that we are very, very professionally trained to help you with. Uh, depression, anxiety, obviously PTSD is the biggest one. Um, there could be adjustment issues. When you separate from the military, everybody understands that it's just a completely different world. It's a change of life. And so we can help you adjust with that. Uh, if you have anger issues or if you've lost a loved one, we can help. Uh, if you have family issues, if you have troubles coping as a, as a family, or if you're having issues with your, with your spouse or your, your significant other, we're here to help. We're here to get you in a direction that gets you better back to back to well and making sure that you're 100% on board with uh, who you are and how we can make you better. This is some of the things that we provide. We provide a, a confidential atmosphere. Uh, we're not going to open up your business to everybody. We're gonna keep it in-house. We're gonna keep it between you and the clinician. Like I said earlier, one of the things we strive to do is, is make sure that there's not a lot of wait time for you as far as once you contact us, we're gonna try to take care of you and get you in the, in the building and help, uh, you know, obviously not in the building now because we're using Zoom, but you know, getting you the help you, uh, that you absolutely need as quickly as possible. Uh, military competence care, I would say probably every single person that works in the clinic has some affiliation with the military some way or how, whether it be family members, whether they've served themselves, whether they're combat um, soldiers, sailors, or, or airmen that have actually been there and done that and understand where you're coming from. I think that's a big thing. Um, you have people that have served, that have seen what you have seen, have felt what you have felt, and can understand what kind of care you absolutely need. Uh, we have a welcoming clinic environment. When, it, when the time comes for you to be able to come into our clinic, you will be astounded by the fact that we have such a wonderful facility. We take, we take very much a, a high deal of pride in what we do and how we handle things and look forward to having anybody and everybody in the clinic that we can give them the support and the help that they need. We can help you with employment, housing, finances, and education. That's uh, definitely something with our case manager, Miriam, who we'll have to talk about as well. But I think the biggest thing now is the transition. As you can see, we're doing this meeting on a Zoom meeting instead of having it in-house where I'd invite you to come into our clinic and see what we have to offer, we're using telehealth. We transitioned from telehealth immediately when this crisis and COVID hit. And we've been doing it 
ever since we started. In fact, at this point, we've had sent over 65,000 healthcare visits through um, telehealth and it's face-to-face -face video therapy and it's been working amazingly. And we have been striving to stay on top of the situation at hand and making it so that we're trying to ease the burden of how everybody's lives have changed. And I believe that CVN and our clinic specifically has done a great job to do that. And I kind of wanted to share before my time is up, because I think I'm getting to the class in about a minute or so. I just want to give you a couple of statistics that um, I think are kind of relevant to what's going on here. It says here that um, not only do you have received the care, but we also accept most major insurances. And if you find a situation where you don't have insurance, we're going to work with you and find you a way to get the care that you need. Uh, we're not going to just send you out the door. We're, we're a client-centered therapy. We focus on mental health challenges. I said, like I said, and I listed all of those things for you before. But I think the most important thing is that 70% of Americans today are concerned with their physical health. And of that, 58% of those Americans are concerned about their mental health because of social distancing. We are all going through this. We are all going through it together. But as a clinic and what we do through CBN and through um, military family clinic here at Valley Cities is to make a difference in change to get you back to better and to get you the, the, the help that you deserve and that you absolutely need. And we do that with 100% professionalism and pride and look forward to serving you. And I can't wait to hear about what Miriam has to talk about and also our two guest speakers as well. I think it's very informative and I, I'm very excited for it, all of what's to come. All right, thanks, Ron. Again, my name is Mary. I'm so welcome to this webinar. We are very excited to have you with us. Uh, my name is Mary Ampengu. I am the case manager for the Cohen Clinic. I definitely love what I do. Again, as Hope was trying to state earlier by introducing me, I really find my um, satisfaction when I have my clients being connected to services that they are looking for. One thing that I was really excited about working for the Cohen Clinic is the fact that we're not only focusing on just providing mental health services, but we are actually also helping our clients to be able to connect to services in the community and with the background that I already had as a case manager. So I really jumped in, in the opportunity and be able really to connect our clients, their families to different opportunities we have. And so as um, Ron was sharing earlier, his role really is to bring those partners in the clinic and I maintain them. I, kind of played our role of being a bridge, a liaison between clients and those partners so we can be able to offer something sustainable to our clients. And so with my role of helping clients to live a well-balanced life, so there are different things that I can definitely do when it comes to connecting them, whether that need, they're, they're in need of childcare, education, employment, legal assistance, and anything else uh, as you can read on your screen. So those are the things that I am um, able to do as far as connecting those, um, our clients please, uh, to those resources. And as we know, since the pandemic started, um, many families have encountered a lot of difficulties. And in our area, what I've been discovering is per the, requests that I was receiving, whether that be internally with our own clients or other people just trying to reach out and, you know, be able to find resources that were available. The two most ones were really employment and also financial, whether that be budgeting or financial assistance so they can be able to meet their needs. And so that's why today we are very excited to have two of our partners to be able to talk um, about those resources that they have and that can be beneficial for our clients and uh, families in the community. So to start off uh, with two of our guests and presenters today, we're gonna start with uh, Jennifer Pruitt 
who is the veterans case manager at the WorkSource office in, uh, at JBLM. So she's going to be able to talk to us today about navigating career opportunities. And I know she has a ton of experience working with veterans and providing employment services to those in need. And I also know that she's going to be able to talk to us today about different opportunities that the WorkSource office uh, offers. So Jennifer, please go ahead. Thank you, Miriam, and it's great to see you, and I appreciate the introduction and being able to be here today. I'm going to turn my video off I present. I, we do have um, MiFi's at home, so it's a little bit low bandwidth. I wanted to say hi to everybody first, though. So let me go ahead and stop my video, and we will go ahead and get started. So you can go ahead and go to the next slide, and we'll hang out there for a minute while I talk about WorkSource JBLM and our partnership. Um, we sit in the Hawk Career Center, usually on North Fort Lewis. Right now, a lot of our partners partnerships are at home and able to work virtually um, almost almost a year now in March we went home and uh, continued virtual services and didn't skip a beat so that's been wonderful on the screen you're going to see our menu of services and I want to jump through kind of what WorkSource JBLM is as the partnership what our main office does and how those all intersect and tie together you will see I want to point out our email at the bottom the WorkSource JBLM at esd.wa.gov and our phone number that goes to our intake specialists who um, are able to get you scheduled and going immediately. So with the menu of services, I wanted to dive into what each of the bullets are. So the career exploration, um, that's going to be the introduction and basics of um, learning where you're going to go with your career. Maybe um, you're not sure you need to take some assessments and figure out what's the next step as you exit out of the military. Maybe you've been out of the military for a little while or you're a family member of a military um, veteran or a spouse. And so maybe you want to shift gears completely. Maybe you haven't worked for a little while due to PCS moves. This career exploration appointment would be great. Um, moving forward into the career guidance, that's where we kind of dive into the research of pursuing what your desired career is. And we work to set goals with you to outline and achieve what those next steps are. Moving into resume building, this is really that introduction of resume writing. So if you're not really sure what a new resume should look like or what the formats look, need to look like with the new applicant tracking systems, we're gonna learn about different formatting styles, how to write um, really strong resume bullets using your chronological experience, and then how are we gonna target um, your resume and those keywords from the job description. When we go into the next bullet with resume reviews, um, whether it's civilian or federal resume, that's where the counselors, our career counselors are gonna give you one-on-one -on -one feedback on your resume. So you do have to have a little bit of something on paper first. Um, maybe you need to come to resume building, that's totally fine. Once we get into that one-on-one -on -one of the resume you do have, that's where we're gonna look at verbiage, grammar, formatting, and, and really the targeting aspect of what is the employer looking for? And how can I tell them that I'm the ideal candidate for that position with as little words as possible, ideally on your resume. Moving into the cover letters though, that's a little bit different style of writing as most of us know. And so we'll learn why our cover letter is important. How do they differ from resumes? And what formats can we use to kind of convey our ideas and who we are as a person when we're just using these writing tools to do that? But those can be very, very important tools. Job search strategies is our next, uh, I guess, key shift here. When we look at job search strategies, we're, we're really figuring out how can we find the jobs that we want? How can we network? What are some hiring events we can attend to get our name out there? Maybe informational interviews and really building that, that network around us, that community, whether it's veterans or employers that we're sharing information with and, and taking our next step. We have a couple different interview appointments available. Interview skills, that's gonna be identifying what employers expect from you in an interview. And then how do you implement certain strategies to be successful throughout the process? Now, if you're like me, I get incredibly nervous in interviews because I really want the job, right? So we have mock interviews. That's where you have the opportunity to really put those skills to test. You're gonna practice in that live interview scenario. So we're gonna set up a panel if you wish, or it can be one-on-one. -on -one. You're gonna enter the virtual call just as you would with an employer. Um, and when it starts, you're, we're gonna go right into the interview of, of introducing yourself, using your elevator pitch. And then at the end of it, we'll have 
I've had a chance to give you that honest um, feedback and it's it's not anything to, to tear anybody down. We're just giving direct honest feedback. We're giving pros and cons. What did you do well? What could you have done to elevate it and, and continue to move forward and practice those things? So we find that moving through these appointments, getting to the end where you practice that mock interview really gives you that better chance to, to know when you get to, in front of the employer that you can nail it, you got your nervousness out, you shook that out, um, and you can get the, get the job that you want. Moving into some of the veteran services, this is where we, um, we really do those community referrals. We know that we can't help anybody on our own. It, it really takes that community, uh, that community network. That's where we're reaching out to um, places like the Cohen Clinic. We're, we're reaching out to our Washington State Department of Veterans Affairs for the financial assistance programs. You'll hear from um, the Veteran Hub next. We reach out to them a lot. And so we're doing tons of community referrals and, and getting everybody to the place they need to be to receive the assistance that they need. So that's WorkSource, um, JBLM in a nutshell, I'm going to move into all of our partnerships under that umbrella and a little bit of what they have to offer. On the screen, we have WIOA. Um, that's our career team at WorkSource JBLM. They have different assistance programs. So whether you need to start and get your GED and get your foot in the door at maybe your um, entry level path employment, or you need tuition assistance, short-term training, certifications to get your foot in the door somewhere. They have assistance with all those and um, financial assistance along the way. They have paid internships um, that may lead to sustainable employment as well. It, really, we always going to meet you where you're at. They're going to figure out what you need and how can we cross barriers you may have to get you there. Next slide, please. So some of the eligibility with WIOA, one of the things I do want to point out is retirees just aren't eligible for the WIOA grant. It's a federal grant, and so it kind of clashes with funding there. So um, this is just one program we don't refer retirees to. We do um, get our transitioning service members over there six months or about 180 days from separation. And they do serve veterans who've transitioned within the last 48 months and maybe haven't had um, an easy go at holding employment or just stopgap jobs, temporary jobs within the last 48 months from exiting. They can also um, they can also enroll those veterans into their program. They serve all military spouses who may be unemployed or underemployed. Um, or maybe you've lost employment due to relocation with duty station changes. Um, we know that's that's a factor. So they can serve the military spouse as well. Their contact information is on the bottom. And I do want to point out, each slide will have certain contact information. Our main WorkSource JBLM email and phone number can always get anybody routed to any of our partnerships. They do schedule um, for, for just about everybody here or can do uh, referrals. So we'll go ahead and jump to the next slide. Awesome. So VI25, Veterans Industry Education, that is the community college networks within 25 miles of JBLM, and they really focus on those industry certificates. What's high in demand? What can we offer that's a sustainable career? It's for service members who are still on active duty, and they can attend classes with commander's approval um, within the last six months of active duty where we're not having to use tuition assistance just quite yet. So that contact will be Mr. Jack Berry. Um, and, and just like everybody kind of in this network, we're all veterans, military spouses. Um, and so just like Jack, everybody's a veteran. And that's kind of nice to be able to reach out to all these entities at WorkSource JBLM. Um, just like Ron was mentioning, we're all invested because we've been there, we've transitioned and we understand. So we'll move on to the next slide. Okay, so our state VA, this is really exciting. Um, I know they have a lot of information out there already, but we do have a partnership with our Washington State Department of Veterans Affairs. And I wanna talk about a little bit what they can do for you. So they connect veterans and the whole military family to any of the benefits um, at the state and federal level. They offer um, the informational and advisory services. They can kind of help you navigate federal VA processes, whether that's school benefits or maybe your disability compensation. Um, they connect veterans and military families with the program and services in the community as well. So there's a lot of referring back and forth between WorkSource and our state VA. So like I mentioned on the previous slide, they're gonna help with VA claims and benefit assistance tons of warm hands-offs to other state agencies, offices, and benefits. 
They have a couple different financial assistance programs. One of those is the Veterans Innovation Program for veterans who have um, a post 9-11 deployment and are experiencing a financial hardship. And you can work with your vet rep at um, any of the WorkSource offices or myself at WorkSource JBLM for this application. They also have the Homeless Veterans Reintegration Program. And that's employment resources and funding for veterans who are either already homeless or within 60 days, maybe nearing homelessness. We step in and help them with funding and employment resources to get them back on their feet. They also have transitional housing, which kind of ties in with our homeless programs, helps veterans get off their feet. Um, they have somewhere to stay, depending on their situation, a few months or so, and it helps them save funding and they receive case management to help figure out their individual situation. All right, Pack Mountain, also in the Hawk Career Center. They serve the JBLM community, um, transitioning service members, spouses, and their families. They also serve the retiree. So they offer different work experience programs, customizable internships. They have spouse ambassador programs designed to reintroduce spouses back into the workforce if they've been out of the workforce for a while. And they also offer the airframe and power plant masterclass. That's specifically for transitioning service members. On the next slide, it shows some of their classes offered. In our Career Center, we do have several classes offered and it rotates through our hot Career Center calendar that I'll make sure we get a chance to send out to anybody who's interested. Um, but they offer several different resume and interview classes as well that are gonna help you kind of where you're at your intermediate level, advance to that next level and elevate once you have something on paper there. Okay, what's next? Awesome. Okay, so our Department of Social and Health Services. You may have known them as DSHS. They can serve the entire military family um, as well, whether it's active duty or veteran. They offer the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, so their basic food program known as SNAP. Um, and that can get, get families by in times of need uh, with food. They also have cash programs, depending on the situation. And they also offer the medical assistance. So if you exit out of the military and for some reason are eligible for VA medical um, and, and you need health care for yourself or your family, they would offer you medical care as well if you were to contact DSHS. They have a state call center line or we have a veteran who works at DSHS in the Lakewood office who's able to do um, applications over the phone, Mr. Gene Sultan. That was my last slide and I am so thankful to be here. If anybody has any questions, I will watch the chat. Our contact information again is 253-593-7320 and the WorkSource JBLM at esd.law.gov. Thank you. All right, thanks Jennifer. That was really, really good. Thank you for sharing all the information and the services that you guys provide at WorkSource JBLM. And Again, as uh, Jennifer said, so if you need contact information for their agency, please let us know. We will definitely send you that information or you can definitely call us as well because we really wanna want you to know that you can always, even if you're not in need of mental health services, you can always contact us and we will connect you to all the services that are available for you in the community. So next we have another wonderful partner partner of ours that uh, I just connected with not a long time ago. So I am really excited to have Keith Locker with us today to be able to talk about understanding financial budgeting. And I know that we are all in need of understanding some financial budgeting to help us manage our finances. And of course, he's going to also be able to talk to us about more of the services they do provide at the um, Lessee Veteran Services Hub. So. Keith actually is the manager for the Lacey Veterans Services Hub in Lacey, Washington. Thank you so much. And Keith, go ahead. Well, thanks for having me here today. Okay, so uh, to start out with, so, you know, budgeting is uh, probably one of the big concerns for most people other than employment, especially uh, when you're transitioning. Uh, and, and the problem is that most people live within their, their, their means and their income. Uh, and so the problem usually comes when they have a, a change in that which happens either when you're transitioning out of the military uh, or you're transitioning from one job to another job or here since COVID started, uh, you end up losing your job, you get laid off. And so now you're trying to survive on, on less money. Uh, so the important thing is trying to, to readjust that budget 
so that you kind of live in, you know, within your means. Uh, there are several organizations out there. I know that uh, a lot of the banks uh, actually will provide that service uh, for no charge. Uh, they'll, they'll help you out with uh, with putting together a budget, uh, working your checkbook. Uh, now, especially nowadays with everybody using credit cards and debit cards uh, attached to their bank accounts, you know, most people don't track, you know, they like they used to uh, how much money they have in the bank. So it's it's easily be, be go over budget or draw your account down. Uh, there's also some companies out there, some financial management companies uh, that like that are willing to assist. You know, veterans who kind of need those services are asking for the services. Uh, and there's a couple that will even assist if you already have uh, a credit score that you're trying to, that is too low for you to, you know, to get credit and to get help, uh, they can help you raise that credit score, uh, which we end up seeing a lot for people who are homeless. Uh, they usually have bad credits. They're trying to find uh, an apartment for them to move into. Uh, so we kind of use those services also. Uh, but the biggest mistake we see most people use is when they get into financial issues uh, is they rely on their credit cards to try to save themselves, uh, which is one of the worst things you can do because all you're doing is, is basically putting yourself uh, in more debt and eventually you're going to max out those credit cards and then you have no other resources and you're so far in debt that's kind of hard to get back out of that hole again. Uh, so there's a lot of programs here, especially in Washington, that can assist you in getting assistance that you need before you get to that point. So I kind of want to kind of go over those, some of these. Uh, so the first one we're going to talk about is, uh, here's a, a list of all those programs. Uh, so the first one is the County Veterans Assistance Fund. Next slide. So the Assistance Fund is actually, a, it's a state program. So the state directed that every county in, in, uh, in Washington uh, should take a portion of the property taxes from their county and set them aside uh, to assist veterans in need. Uh, each county kind of runs a little bit different because it was left up to the county on how they do that. Uh, so, but you can go in and usually search for your Veterans Assistance Fund uh, and it will give you uh, your county's representatives. Uh, another good thing about these individuals is that they're usually tied into all the other veteran programs. Uh, so if you need assistance or some other services that uh, that they can't assist you with, as they, they know the people in that community that can can help you out with those programs. Uh, but it's, like I said, it's kind of run a little bit different by each county, but it is a great resource. You know, if you if you fall behind and you need some help with paying uh, your your rent and, and utilities uh, that keep you successfully housed. Uh, next slide. Uh, so I know Jennifer kind of talked about this already, the Veterans Innovation Program. Uh, so yeah, there's two actual ways to access this. Uh, one, you can go to the WDVA's website. Uh, and they actually have an online application that you can download and fill out. Uh, or you can go to one of the, the through WorkSource, they have WorkSource representatives, which is uh, the DevOps, Disabled Veteran Outreach Program Coordinators. And they can assist you in putting this application together and uh, all the information and documents you need for that. Uh, this is a, the important thing about this is this is a one-time grant. Uh, so you can only use it once in your lifetime. So. Uh, it's probably may not be your first choice of, uh, but if you get in a, a financial need, it's a great resource to kind of help you out with that. Next slide. Uh, so then we have a couple that are tied to veteran service organizations. Uh, so this first one here is a temporary financial assistance fund through the American Legion. Uh, so this is a grant that's given through uh, the American Legion that assists veterans that have children in the home. Uh, so money actually comes out their children youth program is to make sure that uh, the children of uh, veterans will always have a place to stay. Uh, so you could actually go to any veteran service officer uh, with the American Legion. They can help fill out this application uh, and, and put together the documents uh, to receive that funding from them. Next slide. Uh, the Veterans of Foreign Wars Unmet Needs. Uh, so this is a, a similar program that the, the VFW has. Uh, to assist that, uh, you can go to the website for the VFW or just kind of Google unmet needs. And it's an online application that you can fill out that can assist you uh, up to $1,500 uh, with uh, some the help of pay off some of your past due bills. Next slide. Uh, here's another one through Disabled American Veterans Emergency Financial Assistance Program. Uh, so this one actually runs through their national headquarters. Uh, but you could actually go to a, a VSO with the DAV 
uh, and they can help you uh, get assistance through that. Uh, I will add that. So we actually have veteran service officers for the American Legion, uh, the VFW and the DAV at our location. Uh, so you come down here and apply for those programs uh, with them. Uh, and in Thurston County, we have the Veterans Assistance Fund coordinator that's located in our, in our, in our building also. Next slide. Uh, so Veterans Family Fund of America, this is a, a local nonprofit uh, that they, they have funding. Uh, if you have to go to their website, you can apply online for their funding. Uh, they're looking more for uh, providing funding for some things that aren't covered under other programs, uh, like uh, vehicle repairs. There's very few programs that can help you out if, you're, you know, if your car breaks down and you need it to get fixed, so you go back and forth to work. Uh, so that's a, that's a good uh, resource there. Uh, it's usually a pretty quick turnaround if you use that resources also. And next slide. Uh, so then, of course, uh, Jennifer already kind of talked about this is a uh, temporary assistance for needy families. So this is run uh, and the SNAP program are both run through uh, DSHS's community service office. Uh, they actually, you can actually go online and fill out an application for this program, uh, or they have a telephone number that you can call directly and actually do the application and the interview at one time, uh, whichever is kind of quicker for you and easiest. Uh, here at the, at the Lacey Veterans Service Hub, uh, we're under one of the, also under contract that we can do those applications for you if you need that kind of assistance. Next slide. Yeah, so these are pretty much uh, the basic uh, resources that we had. Like I said, you know, the time to start using this is before you, you know, you've maxed out your credit cards uh, and, and you, you run out uh, all the way from them. If you just need somebody to do financial management for you to help you put a budget together or whatever those resources are, uh, reach out to us. Uh, I know Pierce County has uh, a program up there also that can assist with that uh, and, and try to get that help before you, it gets too far down in the, in the hole where it's, it's a little bit harder to, to get you out. So other than any questions, that's all, all I had. All right, thank you so much, Keith. Um, we are very excited to have you and also really thank you for sharing on the information that uh, our clients, family members, veterans can definitely take uh, part of when it comes to budgeting or just financial assistance. So again, thank you so much for your expertise. Again, uh, we really wanna thank you. And if you have any question, of course, we will definitely give you the time uh, to ask those. And on the screen, you have our contact information where you can definitely contact us, whether that be for mental health or case management. We really wanna make sure that um, you are comfortable calling us and really asking for any resources and we will be able to connect you with those uh, among all those partners that we have in the community. Again, today we spoke about employment and financial budgeting. So we really believe and hope that all this information was very helpful to you. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to call us uh, 253-215-7070. We'll be definitely more than happy to help, serve, and connect you. Thank you, and I can give you back to Hope. <laughs> sure, thank you, Miriam, and thank you to our presenters. Ron, I know you had a few last words maybe that you wanted to share. I did, I just wanted to emphasize, I, I thank both Keith and Jennifer for participating today. Um, I can speak firsthand to everything that they've spoken about because uh, my prior employers were the state of Washington, uh, both at WorkSource and at the, uh, WDVA. And all of the programs that they speak about are legit. They absolutely do a, a make a great difference in the lives of veterans. And what we do at the clinic also makes a great difference. I do not hesitate as a veteran or a resource to point direction to these veterans, uh, to all of the valuable resources that have been presented to you today. Uh, and do not hesitate, because that's what we're here to do is to help you and to help your family members and your caregivers. Uh, the contact information, I just sent a chat out, it has my my work cell phone number on there. If you need to connect with me in any way, shape or form, feel free to call me, leave me a message. I'll get back to you as soon as I can and we'll get you in, in, in any kind of assistance we can. If we can't help you, we know somebody who can and we'll point you in that right direction. Again, thank you so much for your time today. 
we appreciate your participation and we look very forward to uh, being in touch soon. Have a wonderful day.